Hi, we're at the Corning Museum of Glass in Corning, New York, and we're going to tour the building a little bit. Corning Museum is a special place to me for a couple of reasons. I first visited the Corning Museum in the 60s when I was a boy growing up in upstate New York. I remember being fascinated by glass lenses and cameras at that time. Secondly, as a graduate student, I studied architecture with Gunnar Burgritz and became familiar with the museum that he designed for Corning, which is featured in this video. This was my first visit to Corning since my boyhood, and I was very excited to experience this world of glass, architecture, and cameras. These are the four buildings that I focused on and photographed on the museum campus. They're listed by the name of the architect and the year they were completed. The architect and building that I probably want to focus on most is the Burkert's building, dating to 1976. As I mentioned earlier, I was an architecture student of Gunnar Burkert's in the early 1980s. I was inspired by his buildings and his way of thinking about architecture. Gunnar was a master of reflecting light into buildings. By this I mean that he invented ways to provide natural light to the interior of all his buildings. He was also a conceptual architect in that his designs evolved from an overriding concept or main idea. The Corning Museum that he created integrates his thinking about reflected light and views and has a strong overriding idea behind it. This represents the main idea of the museum, which was to represent glass more or less in its molten state. That is, if you were to pour glass on a surface, it would take on this organic shape, much the same as you see in this illustration. Here's another interesting way to look at that design concept by way of the visitor guide. You can see the shape of the flame and the glass sort of taking on this organic form. It's important when you're photographing a modern building like this to take into account the concepts and the methods that the architect had in mind when designing the building. Another important design concept in the building is the way in which light is brought in and the views that are afforded from inside the building. Generally speaking, bringing a lot of light into a museum from the outside is not desirable because it adversely affects the objects inside the museum. So this design takes advantage of the idea that light is reflected uh, off of the beveled or angled portion below the windows up into some mirrors just above the windows like an eyebrow and then into the space. This helps control the uh, views and minimize the direct light that comes into the museum. The interior space follows the curves of the exterior the display cases have a shape more or less like the windows on the outside with a beveled bottom and a view window. I think the original intention was to be able to look through these cases and then through the window behind and then the effect of a periscope, if you will, takes over and allows you to see sort of a view of the sky. The uh, 
sunshades on the windows gray out this view of the exterior. Uh, I believe that was probably done to filter the light. The other feature of the interior that I was trying to capture was the display cases elevated by these single posts. It's very reminiscent of the building itself, which is up on columns. I believe the, the building was built up on columns because prior to the construction and design of this building, there was a great flood at the Corning uh, Museum. The interior also has these interesting lounges from time to time in corners of the interior of the building. Uh, it's interesting that these are sort of warmer spaces rather than being all glass with wood, perhaps just a gesture to create contrast within the building. This modern addition to the campus offers a different approach to the idea of using glass and light in the design of a museum gallery. The exterior is clad in glass panels and the roof has skylights and baffles to filter the light. The effect is an evenly lit interior that is bathed with white light, an excellent environment for photography. Art objects in the gallery are also enhanced by the light. The main entrance to the museum is almost entirely glass and affords a greater amount of light and views in and out of the building. I thought it was interesting to capture the modern glass interior against the simple homes in the neighborhood and the snow-covered mountains beyond. The lobby contains a blown glass Chihuly sculpture that is animated by the light and movement in the space. At the core of the museum is an interactive innovation area that describes Corning's development of glass. I found that the displays themselves were objects of art and zoomed into some of them to capture their shapes and light. I did not realize the number of contributions that Corning has made to many of the products that we commonly use in everyday life. Also, the line between science and art is often blurred, which I consider to be the hallmark of fine architecture and photography as well. It was a delightful experience to photograph the art objects in the museum. I found myself zooming in a lot to fill the frame with parts of the objects because of the detail that some of the artists were able to bring to their work. There's an interesting relationship between the glass lens of the camera and the glass object being photographed that can result in luminous images.